Washington State Department spokesperson, Morgan Ortegas. Good morning, New Hampshire. I just want to give a special shout out to the New Hampshire GOP. This is an amazing event. Let's, let's clap for them, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I also promised my three-year-old daughter, Adina, that I would give her a shout out from the stage. Adina, can you say hi to everybody? Hi. The prettiest girl in the world is in the front row. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's like her mama. So I love that we can fill a room here of people who are excited about the Republican Party's candidates. You know who can't fill a room? The Democrats nominee for president and our very own border czar, Kamala Harris. Thanks, you got my joke. Good, everybody's waking up on a Saturday morning. Um, okay, as many of you know, I was Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and President Trump's State Department spokesperson. And we, it's, it's a somber day that I come to you because it was just a week ago uh, that we saw some of the worst terror attacks that we've seen since 9-11. And of course, at the end of the Trump administration, we helped negotiate four peace deals with Israel and Arab states. This was the first peace deals in 26 years. So I was actually supposed to be flying from uh, to New Hampshire from Israel. I was supposed to be there this week with Joni Ernst. And if any of you went to Joni in my panel yesterday, you saw us talk about this. Thanks. It's very hard as somebody who was an integral part of the Trump administration to go from the Abraham Accords, the first peace deals between Israel and Arab states in 26 years, to go from that to seeing the slaughter that we saw just one week ago. Hamas terrorists, backed by the Iranian regime, don't let the administration get away, was saying that Iran wasn't responsible. They rampaged through Israel, Israeli communities. They kidnapped Holocaust survivors. These people managed to escape the Holocaust, but they were kidnapped by Hamas, backed by Iran. They mowed down hundreds of concert goers at a peace festival. They beheaded babies. They burnt whole families alive. It was the deadliest day for my fellow Jewish people since the Holocaust. But one thing I can tell you, if I wasn't here, I would be in temple this morning. And what Jews around America, Jews in Israel, and Jews around the world are chanting today, Am Yisrael Hai, the people of Israel live. <laughs> of course, among the dead, are 27, at least, of our fellow Americans. While more than a dozen American hostages are still missing, many of, them, many of these Americans likely taken hostage by Hamas. Hamas has threatened to execute these hostages live on television. They burnt one hostage alive. They live streamed it on Instagram, on Instagram, while the terrorists jeered in their final screams. There's been a lot of talk for decades about a two-state solution with Israelis and Palestinians, but what we saw from those terrorists was their clear state for a one, their clear plan for a one-state solution. And let me tell you, their one-state solution has no Jews in it. If there's one lesson we should have learned from history, and just from this past week, it's that we need to believe our enemies when they tell us what they're going to do. Hitler told the world his plans for global domination and we didn't listen. Today, the clerics in Iran chant death to Israel, and then they also chant death to America. Maybe we should start believing them. At this very moment, Iran is advancing its nuclear weapons program while the Supreme Leader Khamenei threatens to wipe Israel off the, state of, off the face of the map. Maybe he means it. His office put a poster with a picture of Jerusalem and the same words made uh, infamous by Adolf Hitler, the final solution. The Iranian regime is the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism and the world's leading state sponsor of anti-Semitism. Iran is just as radical and just as dangerous as ISIS. Right now, as we speak, as we meet here, Iranian assassins are in the United States with active plots to try and kill, to try and assassinate former President Trump, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, my friend Brian Hook, and others. These are all Trump administration officials. Unfortunately, President Biden and his officials, they just don't get it. 
they are ignoring this threat, and in fact, they're making it far worse. This administration, just three weeks ago, gave this Iranian regime that sponsored the tax that we saw a week ago $6 billion in ransom for five, uh, and also five Iranian spies. They exchanged that for Americans. I can tell you, remember during the second term of the Obama administration, Iran, do you remember whenever Obama gave them, uh, the Iranians, the pallets of cash? We remember seeing that reported in the Wall Street Journal. Well, that was $1.7 billion for five hostages that the Biden team just re negotiated. This time, or excuse me, that the Obama team negotiated. This time, Biden paid $6 billion. So Obama did $1.7 billion, Biden did $6 billion. I'd say that's a, about the right exchange rate when you're looking at Biden inflation. But let me tell you. Money Biden paid isn't going to food and medicine. Don't believe them when they say this. It's going to terror campaigns around the world. It's going to use the suicide drones that you see flown in Russia that are destroying Ukrainian citizens and their cities. Under Biden, Iran's oil sales are three times higher than the Trump administration. Iran used to give Hamas $100 million a year. This year, under the Biden administration, Iran gave Hamas $350 million. They seem to be the only people making good money in Biden's economy. No, oh, the truth hurts. Uh, we didn't, it didn't have to go this way. If Republicans showed that we could get Americans out, because remember in the Trump administration, in the last two years, we got two Americans out of Iran, wrongfully in prison. Guess how much we paid for those Americans? Zero dollars. We got out without paying a single cent. This tells you all you need to know about Joe Biden. He can't negotiate with our enemies and he can't deter our enemies. He is still trying to cut a nuclear deal with the Iranian regime that would give them billions of dollars in sanctions re relief and zero restrictions on their terror plans. So I, I don't like coming to you as the foreign policy person that you guys see on Fox and from the Trump administration, I don't like coming to you with such a dour message today, but I had to change my remarks last night to reflect the seriousness of the state that we're in. And, and I have to tell you folks, we are at war. The forces of Marxism, extreme Islam, authoritarianism and totalitarianism are at war against the people of faith, against all of us in this room. Why? Because dictators and despots cannot stand it, they cannot tolerate it, that we all answer to a higher calling than the government. We all answer to the Almighty God. And unfortunately, I have to say, it does feel like since Joe Biden has come into office that we are losing this war. Afghanistan, who's it in the hands of now? The Taliban. The coming war is led by a new axis of terror, and an axis of terror is dedicated to the destruction of the United States and the West. Who's at the head of that axis of terror? The Chinese Communist Party, and it's led by Xi Jinping. What does Xi Jinping believe? Well, like most communists, he's a Marxist, he's an atheist. He calls on Chinese citizens, however, to have faith in Marxism. Xi Jinping, the leader of China, wants to elevate Marxism higher than just a political philosophy. He wants it to be regarded as almost another religion entirely. Did you know that Xi Jinping also has his own scripture that every student in, stu in China must study? It's called Xi Jinping thought. Xi Jinping in China has become so powerful that he wants to be treated like God on earth. He wants to be worshiped. That's why his picture is put in every office and in every home in China. Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP, we'll call them for short, they are determined that every religion must answer to Marxism and must answer to the communists. Not on my watch. The CCP wasn't content with regulation alone. Next came the concentration camps. Between one million and two million Muslim Uyghurs today have been placed brutal re-education camps in the Xinjiang province. There, men, women, and young children are brutally tor tortured, sterilized, and then brainwashed. For hours a day, they must repeat slogans like, long live Xi Jinping. They are forced to give up their faith, and they are beaten at the mere sight of praying. Many women, now this is, this is gonna be hard for all of us mamas in the room. Many women are forced, forced, by the Chinese Communist Party to have abortions or forced 
to be sterilized because they don't want them to have Uyghur offspring. One woman was six and a half months pregnant when she and eight other pregnant women were round up, forced to take pills, and had needles in their wombs. That woman lost her child shortly afterwards. I am proud to tell you, though, under President Trump and under Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, we called this crime against humanity exactly for what it is, a genocide. We must also not forget that there are 80 million Christians living in China, and they are subjected to every type of abuse and persecution. Did you know, five years ago, China actually banned the sale of the Bible online for its citizens? Now you can only buy the Bible through the Chinese government. And I can assure you, it's not the same one that you and I read, because they have actually gone in and edited the Bible. Now, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm not from New Hampshire, although I am here a lot. But I can tell you where I am from, you do not edit the word of God. Ch <laughs> China has replaced independent churches with government-run churches. In these fake churches, the Ten Commandments are actually censored and replaced by Xi Jinping's quotes and other propaganda text. One Chinese pastor had a picture of Jesus in his church, pretty normal for a church. State officials stormed the building and replaced the picture with Xi Jinping. I'm here to warn you that it could only get worse. This war against religion is spreading beyond China's borders. If the Chinese Communist Party takes over Taiwan, re religious freedom would die there too. There are 23 million people living peacefully in Taiwan today, and there are almost 3,000 churches in Taiwan. China's ambition to grow into a superpower isn't just about increasing political power. It isn't just about a competition that you hear President Biden and his team talking about. The Chinese Communist Party ambition is to wipe out every ideology and every religion that poses a threat to them. The Chinese Communist Party and their friends hate America. They hate religious freedom, just like the Iranians and just like the Russians. The cost of failure is high. Taiwan might be the next democracy to fall. Israel could soon face the threat of extinction from Iran if Biden's weakness continues. Across all these challenges, our leaders are asleep at the wheel. All of us as Americans, we must stand up and say, enough. I can tell you, it won't happen as long as the Democrats are in control of Washington. That's why the work of the New Hampshire GOP and of all of you in this room and across the Republican Party across this country is so vitally important. If we want to continue to protect our values, if we want to continue to protect freedom of religion, freedom to speak out, freedom to protest, freedom to live, it starts by taking back the Senate and the White House next year. I'm working to do that. I hope you will join me in the fight. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the people of Israel. Thank you.